So here's the thing. One of the very most important steps in healing from breast implant illness is finding a surgeon who not only believes in breast implant illness, but also has the ability to remove your implants the right way. Because without the belief that the illness exists, there is no urgency or care to take in to help you heal from it. So it's really, really important that you're not only giving your money to somebody who can or says they can take your implants out, but also somebody who believes that you are actually suffering from this illness so that they can take the steps necessary and care to look for what's needed and ask the right questions to help you heal. Now, I know how hard it can be to find someone qualified. I personally met with over 16 different surgeons before I found someone that I trusted to do my own explant surgery, which is exactly why in this video, I am going to share with you my actual phone consult with Dr. Brian J. Parker, who is the surgeon I had removed my implants, because I want you to have a good example of what you should be looking for and what you deserve from a surgeon. So I hope you enjoy. So this is Shan. <laughs> Hi, this is Becky. I'm calling from Dr. Parker's office. Um, Hi, Becky. Cheyenne? Yes, you said Cheyenne, yes. right? Hi. Yes. I have the doctor on the other line. I'll put, connect you to him, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, all right, just a moment. <clears throat> Thanks. Hello, this is Dr. Parker. Hi, Dr. Parker. This is Cheyenne Burnett. How's it going? Good. Um, Good. I understand that you have uh, implants in since uh, for about 12 years. And yes. uh, now are you having, or do you believe they're causing you certain symptoms? Um, I, I assume that they're the cause um, just because of where I'm experiencing pain and discomfort is there. So I'm, uh, I have a so burning having, sensation so, that's happening. So you're having uh, pain in both breasts? Yes. Okay. Now uh, you had you had these done in 2010. Was that done in Utah? It was. Yes. I live in Utah. I was just you uh, were recommended. I see. Uh, what part of Utah do you live in? I'm in Salt Lake. Okay. Okay. Um, now, when you had your implants uh, put in, it, that's with silicone. Yes. Is that under or over the muscle? under okay um as you look back when would you say that symptoms first started um you know as far as the the burning and stuff it's been going on for a couple of years but the the last about six months it's gotten far more frequent and like it's it's consistent it doesn't really go away anymore it used to come and go okay and now it's so, just... so it's worse. It's worsened in the last six months. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, do you have any health problems? Not really. No. Okay. Um, any prior surgeries other than the breast augmentation? Um, I had surgery before I had my breasts, um, just because of some issues with my feet. But that was that's it. So on both feet, you had surgery. Yeah, but that was when I was, that was like, oh gosh, probably closer to 18 years ago. I see. Um, have you ever been a smoker? No. Okay. Um, are you on any medication? No. Okay. Children? Yes, I have one. One Little child. boy who's two. <laughs> okay. Um, did you breastfeed? I did. Okay. Um, are you still breastfeeding? I am not. Okay. How long ago did you quit? Um, probably about a year and a half ago. Okay. All righty. Any family history of breast cancer? Not that I am aware of. Okay. And current bra size? Um, I don't really wear bras. I think I'm I'm right around a thirty, like a thirty-four to a thirty-six D. D. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, what incision did they use to put the implants in? 
It's underneath uh, where the breast folds. So underneath. Okay. Me. Okay. Um, have either of your breasts gotten firm? Yeah. So there's this weird thing that happens where I have these like spots that get really tight, like really like rock feeling, but I can push them out. Um, so but they come can, and go. So you can soften back up. Then. Yeah. Yeah. So generally, would you say your breasts are fairly soft? Yeah, they're they're really soft. And I, I did have a another consult with a local plastic surgeon and he uh -huh. felt through them and, and said that, you know, the everything feels really soft. So it doesn't seem like there's. OK, so you probably have what we call a grade one capsule. Um, yeah, I mean, he said grade two, but I don't really know what that means. Oh, you know? OK. OK, so a grade two means that you're slightly firm. OK. Okay, so, all righty. Um, so now, when? So you said you have pain in both breasts. It's kind of a burning mm -hmm. pain. You said. Yeah, okay. there's there's a regular aching, like as if the muscle was just really sore all the time, and then there's a burning that happens. What feels like behind the implants, and I see. It mostly was on my right breast, but it's in the last month or so started to happen with my left breast as well. Okay. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about symptoms that you're having. Okay. Um, what are some of the things that you're experiencing? Um, other, I mean, the, the big reason was the burning that kept coming up. So, and, and like I said, it just has gotten worse and more consistent. Um, other than that, I mean, there's, you know, there's a list of symptoms that, that could be related to them that like I've been in the, but the hospital but you're for. But you're unsure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Anything else? I, I have no idea. Um, other than those I assume are, are associated with whatever's going on with my implants. Okay. Um, so do you want me to run through a lot that I hear routinely or would you want to just sure. start? Okay. So, so the most common ones I usually hear of are, uh, I'll start with the most common and we'll kind of get into some of the okay. less common ones. Um, how about the so-called brain fog where people feel like they're, um, they've lost their cognitive sharpness? Oh yeah. I mean, that's something I, I struggle with daily. Okay. Uh, so, right. Chronic fatigue. Yeah, I mean that—that's actually something that I'm—I've been to a couple of specialists for, not thinking it was related uh -huh. to to my breast implants. Um, because I'm really struggling with that. I, you know, it's one thing when you have a, a two-year-old. Obviously, you're tired, but I, my my baby is sleeping through the night, and I'm still not be feeling oh, like see. I'm getting rest. Okay. Yeah. That. Well. <laughs> yeah. It, it. Well, and if you're 31 years old, you shouldn't be yeah. feeling like this. I shouldn't be exhausted all the time, right? No, you should not be. That's kind of what I felt like, too. Yeah, no. Um, that's not normal. Um, uh, tell me, do you have uh, frequent headaches? So I've actually, I've been in the emergency room recently for migraines, and that's been, I've, I've had headaches off and on for years, but the headaches themselves have gotten much worse, and I, oh, like I said, I ended up in the emergency room for um, what I, I didn't know at the time, but uh, I was diagnosed with migraines then, and that was oh, within the last month or so. Okay. Um, how about uh, hair loss? Have you noticed any of that? Um, not really. I mean, I lost a ton of hair um, after I had my son, and so I, I haven't really noticed additional hair loss. I see. So it's not continuing. Yeah, not not really. Uh, how about ringing in your ear? <laughs> My husband's sitting next to me and he's like, have you seen our bathtub? Are you kidding? <laughs> so maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, funny. Um, I'll put it in then. Um, how about <laughs> ringing in your ears? Um, you know what? That's funny that you say that because I, I, have, I have experienced that. It's like a weird... Um, like deep inside my eardrum kind of ringing that happens yeah. periodically. Well, sometimes it's almost like a buzz. 
Yeah, okay. Or like a vibration that you can almost even feel besides hearing. Yeah, um, yeah. How about dry eyes and or skin? My skin, definitely. My eyes, I don't, I don't think so. Any uh, loss of vision, blurred vision, anything like that? Yeah, that's so funny. Um, yes, but it go, it comes and goes. So sometimes my eyes will be really blurry, and sometimes they'll be fine. Okay. Um, shortness of breath. Yes. Um, insomnia. Uh, absolutely. I really, really have a hard time getting to sleep and staying asleep. Okay. Um, how about anxiety and the other side of the coin that usually mm -hmm. runs with that is uh, depression? I have been diagnosed with both in the last 10 years. Um, I'm currently mm -hmm. doing pretty good with them. Um, I definitely, as far as depression goes, I'm, I'm okay. But I would say my anxiety is still really bad on some days. I see. Um, do you have uh, numbness or tingling in your hands or feet? So when I went to the emergency room recently, it was because I started to get numbness on um, one side of my body. And then by the time we got to the hospital, it was on both sides of my body. So the good news was it wasn't a stroke. But yeah. um, right. But that's what what started. It was, um, you know, I, I had this massive headache hit and then I um, started to get numbness in, in my uh, extremities. My oh, that must have been a migraine. Yeah, um, it was it was kind of scary. Now, is that usually, is that in your hands and feet that you've experienced that or just your hands? Yeah, um, it was mostly just my my hands and it did go up my arm and like into my throat. So it was a weird sensation where it felt like the muscles okay. of my neck were numb. Um, how about joint and muscle pain? Um, yeah, I, I get muscle. I, I have weird muscle contractions that happen periodically. So over the last six months, I've had three or four episodes where muscles will like, um, like tighten so much that they make me collapse because so it's you, in my would back. You say your joints are unaffected or affected also? Um, I I don't think my joints are are so just muscle. that affected muscle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, skin rashes. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I break out in like what seems to be allergy related rashes periodically. Uh -huh. So I guess that could be the same thing. Okay. Um, do you have food sensitivity or chronic bloating? Ex uh, extreme. Yes to both. <laughs> okay. Okay. I actually just so, recently transitioned to a plant-based diet to try to oh, get it under control because it's so, not working. So tell me, <laughs> it's um, working. do you, and so you, you say in the last six months, would you say most of these things that we just talked about have increased? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I, I, the headaches, especially, um, uh -huh. I, you know, I, like I said, I've had headaches off and on for uh, basically as long as I can remember, but never to the degree that they've made me miss days of work or end up in the hospital. And that's happened multiple times in the last few months. Oh, oh wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank okay. you. Um, so when you had your consultation, uh -huh. um, with the other doctor, did you, um, well, let me back up. Do you believe you have breast implant illness? I am aware of it as a possibility. <laughs> um, uh -huh. it, it would, so I, I've been, like I said, I've been down the path of going through, uh, to a lot of different specialists in the last six months to a year. Um, I've been looked at for endometriosis, which has a lot of the same, symptoms um the the answer to that was i was told it's not likely um i've also seen gastro uh, intestinal specialists and i've seen um pelvic floor specialists and i've seen but yet, doctors they, for found, my headaches. But yet they found nothing to describe why you're feeling yeah. the way you are right I, I get feelings like i'm i'm getting bladder infections and like utis all the time and i've been tested 
the last three times I've been tested, those tests have come back negative. So oh, so it so feels I'm, like a UTI, but you're not actually getting them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according oh, to to the test that I'm getting. Okay. Done yeah. at my normal doctor. No. So well, see, here's the now. When you went to the other surgeon, did you talk mm -hmm. about uh, breast implant illness with that person? And I did not, um, just because fear of of what you know people have said. Be really cautious because they won't give you the information or tell you the truth. Um, you you are recommended as somebody who is is actually somebody worth <laughs> worth having the real conversation with. Um, I so I. I did not go into to full detail. I did ask a couple of questions about how he would remove them, and and it wasn't in alignment with what I think I. Oh boy. Uh, okay. What I think is so. In other is what words, I want. Uh, probably well, and may have even said, "Are you sure you want to remove them? You're, uh, you need <sighs> yeah. to put implants back in." Um, and if we do talked about a breast them, lift and and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, if I uh, if he was doing it, <laughs> he would do a breast lift, and I'm like, I'm sure because the cost is three times as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't like that approach. So here's, here's what I see. Um, so first of all, there isn't any science really that has been published on breast implant illness. Now, right. Does that mean, does that mean it isn't, it isn't real? No, it doesn't mean anything of the kind. In, in fact, I know that there's something going on because I've been doing this for over, I'm going on 10 years now. And oh, yeah. it's become the most common surgery I do. I'm taking between four really? and six of these out a, a week. Wow. And so, and when we take them out, guess what percentage of people feel better? All Probably a lot. Really, you know, all of they them. They all feel better. And so oh my God. here's the thing. That's, um, I think it's very Un, well, here's the thing. It's not normal that a 31-year-old feels the way you do. You're describing the way an 80-year-old feels. And right? you know what? It would be nice to get you back to good. So what I recommend we do is we take your implants out. Okay. We, we have a theory that you have breast implant illness, whatever that is, or whatever mm -hmm. that turns out to be once we figure it out. And so we're going to go and do the surgery. And when we do the surgery, we want to be very careful for two main reasons. One is we want to make sure we get the capsule completely out. Because I believe that the, well, the theory there is that if your implant has been leaching all this uh, toxic material into your system over this time, well, then that a lot of that toxic mm -hmm. material has actually absorbed into the capsule, which um, doesn't have a good blood supply because it's scar tissue. And so I right. think that if we leave that, that becomes the source of the toxin. So I think that's why we, rem we need to remove that. The second thing is we want to be careful from the standpoint that we don't want to remove any of the original you. In other words, we want you to still have all your breast tissue, we want mm -hmm. you to we want you to have all your muscle tissue, and then um, you should be able to look very close to what you would have looked like before you ever had this done. Now, yeah. Okay. Here's here's the other thing. You may or may not need a lift. I don't look at you and go, "Oh my gosh, sure. I need a lift. I'm going to push that." What right. Is, That's up to me. Excuse me. What I see when I when I look at your pictures is that. Um, you don't really have a whole lot of droop going on right now. Now, when mm -hmm. we take out the implant, sometimes people will develop a, a, a significant uh, degree sure. of, of droop. But what I find out, since it looks like your skin is in good condition, you're young and you're healthy for all other intents and purposes. Right. <laughs> what we find is that when we take the implants out, you're going to droop for a little while. A little while but what's going to happen over a six-month period of time is your skin is literally going to undergo a contraction process where it's literally going to shrink. And so you may look just fine when all is said and done. So yeah. rather than just automatically give you these anchor scars, which one around your nipple, one that drops to or that goes from the nipple to the base and one along the base, we don't want to give you that anchor scar 
on both of your breasts if you don't need it, especially someone who's right. one so years sure. old. It would be nice well, I if, appreciate you could, that. if you could wait till you get to 50 to maybe right. need that and maybe not at all. Right. So I don't recommend we just jump all over a lift. I think a okay. lot of times, and especially if you said, oh, I've got BII, what mm-hmm. most surgeons will do is they'll go, oh, let's do fat transfer and we're going to do a lift. Otherwise, oh, you're going to look horrible if we don't do that. Right. Already. You're going to hate I how just, you look. And I just couldn't live with myself if you, you know, they'll give you that kind of garbage. Right. And and then $25,000 later, you've okay. got all this stuff and you didn't necessarily need it. So right. I, I say we take the implants out. Let's run the experiment, so to speak, and see how you feel. Uh, most of my patients usually feel, start to feel notable difference by about three weeks. Not everybody, but most of my patients. Okay. And so yeah. usually by six or eight weeks, all of my patients have noticed some improvement in some way, shape, or form. Now, most of my patients also tell me, though, that for a full year, they're still gaining ground. They're still yeah. what? Gaining ground as far as feeling. Oh, like better. getting better. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So they Look. they were in there for a long time, and sometimes it takes a little bit longer than just a few weeks to feel completely better. I mean, however, I'm right. I, they were in how, my body for 12 years this, at this point. Exactly. Well, and here's the other thing. The number one thing that I hear after surgery, usually six or eight weeks after surgery, is, oh, my gosh, Dr. Parker, I feel like I got my life back. Which is amazing. Oh, I mean, that's right. what I hope you feel. You mean, okay. Uh, <laughs> because it would be lovely if you can go back to feeling normal and healthy and, and like you want to do things. I would love rather that. Rather than feeling so lousy that you don't even want to get out of bed in the morning. Totally. It's been, you know, I, and probably the driving force behind it is I do have this wonderful two-year-old that I just... I'm just so tired and exhausted all the time, and I just don't think that's fair. <laughs> well, being a mother, there should be some rewards to it, and it should be fun right. for the most part um, because because kids are so – I mean, they're so fun, especially when they're your own. <laughs> uh, right. and, that, and that should be a really fun process for you, but I think feeling lousy takes takes that away. It definitely, definitely impacts it. So, anyway um, – so th- that's the surgery I recommend we do. Okay. Um, now, when we do this surgery, it takes about two to two and a half hours. Um, and yep. and again, the reason we take that long is because we're careful to get all the capsule out in one piece. Right. And we're careful that we don't remove any of the original you, because hopefully if we do that, you shouldn't, I, hopefully you won't need anything more. Yeah. Now, if you do, I would wait for the six months to pass. By that time, um, by six months, what you see is what you should get. In other words, okay. it's not going to have a lot of improvement after that. So it's six okay. months, if you need something, we can talk about fat transfers. We can talk about doing lifts maybe. But uh, sure. I think there's a good chance you won't need it either. Well, that's that that's the direction I was leaning when I started talking, you know, talking about this out loud and, and deciding that this is where uh-huh. what I wanted to do. I, I was leaning in that direction. So that makes me feel good about it. Okay. Now, when we do this surgery, we use general anesthesia. It means you're okay. completely asleep and you won't feel anything until you wake up. Now, when you wake up, you will have drains in. And by the way, the reason we put drains in is because if we didn't put drains in, both breasts would probably fill up with with fluid and then we would need to drain you with a needle and a syringe and that's not fun at all Um, now secondly while you're draining fluid for that one for while we leave the drains in and and we take them out and on post-op day number eight um, while you're draining fluid though I believe that at least theoretically um, I think it's it's probable that you're actually draining toxin with it and so I think that helps you to detoxify more quickly than would otherwise be the case. Third reason is that is, is that the last thing I do before I wake you up is we in, we inject you in, through your drains with numbing medication, and that makes you numb for 8 to 12 hours after surgery. And that gives you a huge head start on pain control. On top of that, then we give you pain medications too. And I would say most okay. of my patients are usually off of those by three to five days, so it doesn't last very long. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, when we do the surgery, 
there are some risks that go along with it. For example, sure. there's about a 2% risk of infection. Um, and we give you antibiotics before we irrigate the pocket out with antibiotic uh, solution during, and then after we give you pills for five days. If you follow instructions and take your medications, on, you know, as instructed, uh, typically mm -hmm. the risk of infection is really low. In rare cases, it could become a deep infection that requires IV antibiotics in a hospital setting or going back okay. to the OR to clean you out. And then, um, and but anyway, it's if you follow instructions, the risk should be very low. Okay. There's also about a 2% risk of, inf of, of uh, bleeding as well. And so, which means that Two out of 100 will have issues with bleeding. Approximately 98 will not. But if you do two things for me to help minimize that, that really goes a long way to help to really minimize it as much as we can. Two things I want you to do is I want you to avoid any blood thinners starting two okay. weeks before on up through two weeks after. Those are things like headache medications, red wine, garlic, mm -hmm. vitamin E, energy drinks, green tea, fish oil, ginseng, ginkgo, and other things. And we want you to take it easy after surgery as well. Uh, what I mean is keeping your elbows to your sides and acting like I sutured them to your sides uh, for, mm. for one week. For about three weeks, okay. I want you to avoid lifting anything heavier than about 10 pounds. And I want you to avoid household type chores like cooking, cleaning, vacuuming, laundry, things <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> um, for about three weeks. Now, okay. if you do both of those things, bleeding shouldn't be of much concern. Got it. Okay. Now, when we do the surgery, there's also a risk of losing nipple or breast sensation. If you haven't already, mm -hmm. you, have you lost any sensation in either breast? Yeah. Yeah. It was impacted when I got them done. So I, at this point, that's not a huge concern right. for me. Okay. So sometimes, because there's nerves that run up close to your armpit, which sometimes mm -hmm. the implant will, will go up into that area pretty closely. Yeah. Sometimes you can get some, after the surgery, you get some, most of the time it's temporary, a nerve, like numbness on your, like your arm or that goes mm -hmm. down your arm and in your hand and even that. So there is a small risk of that too, but typically okay. that returns to normal. Okay. Got it. Um, okay. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Really? Oh, let me yeah. ask you this. Oh. If you were going to have these removed, um, most of, I, I do a lot of out of town patients. Um, okay. The one thing that, that was a always, question I had cause always, I am in Salt Lake. Always kind of worries me. Um, mm -hmm. so what I, what I prefer is if you can stay until post-op day number eight, like you just have a place okay. that you could, you know, flop for, you know, for, for a week. Mm -hmm. Um, because then it allows me to see you to the point where I can remove your drains, remove your stitches. Most you're you're past most of the risk of you know some of the things that can happen, and and so I get to remove the drains and the stitches and other things yeah. like that. And then from there on, most of my patients will usually go home and we'll you do the rest of the follow up over the phone, and we have you send okay. you pictures, and then we can get on the phone and and talk you through things, stuff like that. Uh, some okay. patients just go, oh no, I'll I can just come down for the surgery. And then I'll see you the next day for the for that post op, and then I want to go home, and that's fine too. I and then and then some of my patients will even actually want to take the drain out themselves. Um, yeah. So and, no. and that's happened in the past, <laughs> and I can walk somebody through that. If you have a, a friend who's a nurse or something like that, that's kind of more convenient. But anyway, there's okay. a number of things we can do to get you through this and to follow you up. Okay. Um, Did you kind yeah, of have I mean, any my plans in regards to any of that. I, I I wasn't sure what the timeline on it was. So my husband and I did talk about. We have an RV, so we talked about going down and camp because we like to camp. Um, uh -huh. and then like leading up to it or getting an Airbnb or something. So I can talk through all of that with him. Um, I do have close friends that are medical. Um, personnel, okay. so I could have somebody help me, but I'm more inclined to just stay the time if we can okay and so post-op day no rate we take your drains and your stitches out okay okay yeah any, um any other questions i will say you have? 
Yeah, when I was talking to that other uh, surgeon that I'm not at all inclined to work with, <laughs> he he really stressed that he would not likely take out the full capsule because there's a, a like existential. Um, I'm trying to think the right words to even describe how he, he put it, but it was such a serious um, likelihood of internal bleeding or even collapsed lungs. You obviously okay. did not bring those up. <laughs> okay. So, um, is it, is it po- so what he's talking about is entering the chest wall where it makes a little mm-hmm. hole in the chest wall. And that can happen where literally if air gets in, your lung partially collapses. Um, Got it. well, but there's a way of dealing with that. And so most, well, it used to be that most uh, plastic surgeons were trained in general surgery for it. So guess what? They actually did lung surgery as a part of their training. Uh, oh, so right. If, so if you know how to deal with it, and the, here's how you would deal with it if you had a hole. We, because it can happen sometimes. And I don't know, I've, sure. In the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these that I've done, I've probably seen it happen, oh, three or four times ever. Okay. Oh, and wow. What, okay. And what happens is you'll end up with a little hole and go, dang, there's the lung, which means the air gets between your lung and your chest wall. And the mm-hmm. air getting in is what makes your lung kind of drop a little oh, bit. Oh, I see. And then so now, if you didn't puncture the lung, you're fine. And so you, that yeah. should never that should never happen. Never seen that happen. And but uh-huh. but then what you have to do is you so you suture a little patch of tissue over the hole, and but you put a tube in the hole first. And mm. then once you get it patched, as you, you suction on the tube, as you pull it out, that suctions all the air out between your lung and your chest wall, and it raises mm-hmm. your lung back up. Um, and ah. I've never seen any of the three or four that I've ever seen ever, ever need anything further than that. So it's really easy it. to treat. And so... It sounds like he's talking like, oh, my gosh, you could die if that happened. No, no. Yeah, no. like he made a, no. such a. No. Well, it sounds okay. like he was kind of <laughs> frightened. Um, and, and I guess if you've never been in the chest cavity before and done surgery, yeah. I guess you would be. But it's so rare that it happens, too. Well, and that's what Got I find. I, and so most people that do this, they're kind of telling mm-hmm. them, oh, I'm not. If it's stuck to the chest wall, which it usually is if it's under the muscle. Yeah. And so you can rest assured that a portion of the capsule will be left. I never leave a portion of the capsule. It always comes all the way out. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, Dr. Parker, you're you're exactly who I was hoping you were going to be. <laughs> oh, God. I'm glad I didn't disappoint. <laughs> No, but, not at all. <laughs> so anyway, well, and the and the point is on this surgery, some surgeons don't like it because it's not a fast surgery. So I have one, there's right. a surgeon we have here in town. He's a very good surgeon. But when he talks about uh, BII and removing these, he tells his patients it takes him out 45 minutes to get him out. I'm going, whoa, 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 back up. In fact, I had a patient go, you know what? I, in fact, I told her, I said, he's a good surgeon. There's no reason why I wouldn't go to him. If he can answer your questions to your liking, and I actually sent her back yeah. to him and said, you know what, ask this question, then ask this question. Two questions I had her ask is, the first was, doctor, can you, will you promise me you will get the whole capsule out? He goes, yep, yeah, it'll, it's all coming. And the second question was really the same question asked a different way, which was, well, since mine are under the muscle, I understand that the capsule oftentimes will be stuck to the chest wall. What do you do then? Oh, well, we'll leave it, he says, and we'll just cauterize it. Uh, no, 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 no. Then you didn't oh, answer the first question correctly because you can, really can't right. guarantee you'll get it all out. And so I always get it all out 100%. Um, so anyway. Oh, gosh, okay. Wonderful. Well, I definitely, so, so far, you know. So, so as far I... this week, I've done four of these. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, I'm definitely and I'm inclined to have you four and take mine I'm out. between four and six a week. <laughs> Wow. So anyway, um, and so I think it's kind of a, 
I understand why they might be a little nervous about that. I mean, I don't love it when that we end up with a little hole in the chest wall because what so- sure. sometimes happens is you're literally um, retracting the scar tissue off of the chest wall. And maybe mm. you, as you pull up on it, it will tear a little hole and you're just going, oh, my gosh, there's the lung, you know. And so it's yeah. a tiny little pinhole and you can barely see through it. But And usually that's all we get, which is which is nice anyway because we don't want a big hole. Yeah. Right. So anyway, it's Got not it. Well, a that big definitely deal. makes me feel less afraid of it. He made it seem like, it, like yeah, what yeah, I was going into was way serious. We may not. Yeah, no. That yeah, like, I can't. I have a two-year-old baby. I can't take that kind of risk. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. I'll be sick forever. <laughs> That's well, okay. and I'm very, very, very careful. Um, and so it's it's very rare that we see that. Okay. In fact, I probably Perfect. haven't seen one. Uh, honestly, I would say in at least two years. Really? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, awesome. Anyway. Okay. Well, what what is the next steps to have you help me? <laughs> so typically, you I well, I'm going to have Jennifer call you, and she's going to talk to you about some, okay. some things, and and. Uh, and then if you wanted to schedule, you would schedule with her. And, okay. Uh, and, then we would, and then we would do a pre-op while you're there. Um, okay. And it sounds like you have no health problems, so I don't think you need to really see a doctor. But we would have you go and get some labs drawn, and we'd have you get a mammogram and make sure, because uh, everybody over 30 you know, gets a mammogram, just to screen. It would be bad form okay. to be operating on the breasts and and not screen for breast cancer. We want to just make sure you don't right. have anything going on. Um, and okay. Then, and then you'd come to town the day before. We would see you, and I would listen to your heart and lungs and do a breast exam then. And there's a small chance that we, if we found something, we'd go, ooh, we need to postpone this. But very yeah. rarely. We're very thorough on the front end so that we don't do that. Very that makes often. sense. Okay. Um. I uh, based on the fact that you're doing so many of these, I assume you're booked out pretty far. Uh, we're booked out typically two to three months. But even if you say, oh, okay. oh I want to get this in in a month, typically we can find a hull because even oh, though yeah. we're scheduled that far out, sometimes patients will have something happen where they've got to change things, or or a patient sure. fails their pre-op exam. And so they have to fall out for a while till we get them spiffed mm. up medically to get back on the schedule, things like that. Okay, got it. Okay, well, I'm I'm definitely inclined to have you. You be the one that I I trust you, and I, I you know you've you've spoke on all the points that I was scared to speak of with my doctor, and <laughs> you're the one that brought them up <laughs> because oh, I just felt funny. like nobody really really cares, you know. No, or, or I thinks... believe there's something going on, and I think that what we're going to find is that. We're going to find when the appropriate amount of research is done that they're going to find a certain group of people just their body chemistry just does not work with whatever is, well. is is uh, leaching off of the ba- off of the the surface of these implants over time. And, well, just like right. some people can't take aspirin for whatever reason, their body chemistry doesn't work well with it. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. I mean, there's enough individuality, awesome. it, you know, from one person to another that I think certain things, certain, you know, some people just can't have everything that the next person, the person sitting next to them can have. Right. Definitely. Well, and, and, and this, in my experience, it feels like, you know, a lot of doctors are like, well, X amount of women have had implants for X amount of years and have no problems. So it can't possibly be that. When well, what you're saying, that, you know, it's kind of a silly thing to say. To me. Right. Uh, it, you know, the, well, and these people that assume that, that everything that science can figure out has been figured out. That's kind of what they're claiming, which is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's like, so really, we're not going to ever find anything else scientific. Right. <laughs> For sure. So uh, anyway, so I definitely feel safe having you do it. So I'll, as soon as you can have Jennifer give me a call, please do. Okay, I'll have I will have her give you a call today then. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Doctor Parker. I really do oh, appreciate you're, your you're time so and, and thoroughness. All righty, take care. Oh, and All if right, you have I'm, questions that come too. up after we hang up, 
call us. You got mm-hmm. your, you've got your foot in the door. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Have a okay. good one. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Now that you know what an actual good consult looks like, if you still need help finding a surgeon you can trust, go to explantsecrets.com and download my free explant survival guide, which includes a master surgeon's list and a breakdown of the questions you should be asking any surgeon that you're considering having remove your implants. You've got this, sis. And I've got you. Thank you.